Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the um, Community Board 9 Manhattan Landmarks Preservation and Parks Committee meeting. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're going to call the meeting to attention at 6.41 p.m. Um, unfortunately, we do not have a quorum as of yet. I'm going to um, just quickly take attendance of um, of our members. I'm Heather Jason, one of the co-chairs. Annette Robinson is the other co-chair. Um, we also have present um, Honorable April Adams and Honorable Liz Boitikis. Um, but there are no other, let's see, Patricia Caldwell is on oh, hi. Hi, <laughs> Nice to see you. Um, to see do we you. have any other committee members online? So the, um, I will share the agenda with everyone and we'll, we'll move the meeting along as um, efficiently as we possibly can. Because we don't have a quorum, um, I guess we can't um, adopt the prior minutes. <clears throat> Are there any changes to the agenda? Anyone? I know that notifications probably didn't get out to everyone as timely as we've been doing them in the past. So my apology for that. Um, but I see quite a few of our um, partners have joined us and I appreciate that. So we will um, go ahead then and get started with any updates that we have for um, on the agenda and we can just go in order. Is there anything else on that? No. All right. Um, Mel, are you on? I'm sorry. I thought I saw Mallory. Yes, hi, yes. Can you hear me? Um, yes, Mallory. Hi there. Um, oh, hi, Mallory. Hi. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, it's just a little noise in here because of the oh, train. Sure. <laughs> um, hi, hi everyone. Um, just a quick uh, note to say hello um, and greetings from the greenhouse here. Um, I'm actually here um, at the greenhouse at Riverbank State Park tonight for a class that we have. Um, we're continuing our classes. I'm popping a link in um, the chat uh, with some of our class listings. All our classes are free and open to the public. Um, and yeah, today was our, our healing arts class. I hope that you can join us. Um, and I also wanted to share a special event. So every Saturday we have family programming now that it's getting colder, um, we're inside. So if you're still looking for things to do on a Saturday, um, let folks know they can come over to the greenhouse for food, art, and gardening. Uh, and on December 16th, I wanted to put, um, a special, uh, emphasis on that day because we are working with, we're doing our family programming um, from 1030 to 12, but we're also um, inviting our young people who have been in an eight week um, internship with us to come and they're uh, launching their project, which is a market bag giveaway. So we're inviting um, folks far and wide to come over to the greenhouse and get themselves a market bag. Um, that the young people in the internship have um, packed lovingly with um, handmade teas, um, some herb bundles, and lots of um, great market uh, goodies. So come on December 16th. You can sign up for that event um, on the website there. We're going to be launching our winter calendar very shortly. Uh, and yeah, thank you. And if you have any questions about programming at the Greenhouse, please reach out. We've got lots of great classes coming up including paper making uh, with plants and seeds, um, including um, uh, bat uh, herbal bath waters and uh, yeah, lots of lots of great things to look forward to. Uh, why, uh, bird feeders for making bird feeders and a wildlife tree this Saturday. So uh, come through. You said wildlife what for this Saturday? Um, we'll be decorating our wildlife tree. So right now we oh, have some trees. palms outside of our greenhouse, but we are going to be 
um, giving those a new home and they're gonna we're gonna have two small um, evergreens that we'll be decorating with uh, bird feeders and kind of celebrate the wildlife in the park. Okay. All right. Um, and just one other thing, are there any committee members, any committee ma member who would like to volunteer to take notes for the, um, take notes for our minutes? Is there anyone? Okay, we'll try to work together then to try to make I, sure that um, we get there. Heather, I happened to, I was sitting here, believe it or not, taking notes, so okay. I... <laughs> If we can we'll, we can work together, um, Patricia, okay, to try to pull the minutes together. I'll I'll make sure that you get the recording and the transcript thank to you. help you with the notes, um, and I'll kind of give you a guide. Um, we'll work together on thank it. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate uh, that. that. She mentioned call. What is this? Community gardens date December. Um, the community, um, Mallory, if you could just, um, someone's asking a question in the audience regarding the date for the community. Um, for the for the greenhouse, giveaway. is it this Saturday, December sixteenth? Oh yes, December the giveaway. 16th. Yes, December sixteenth, ten thirty to twelve, and you'll you can um you can actually just you know come come on through, but you can also sign up and get those details. It'll be listed as the family pharmacy program on December sixteenth on our website. Okay, a family pharmacy, as in far F A R M pharmacy. <laughs> you got it. Yep. <laughs> Okay, in case you're checking the web. Um, and then everyone, if you could kindly, if you are online, if you could please sign into the chat. That's how we keep attendance of who comes. So please, everyone, sign into the chat. Everyone who's present in person, they sign um, as they come into the door. So we just we just need everyone online to be able to sign in too as well. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Mallory. Wesley, I think I saw you um, on. Are, are you ready, Wesley? Oh, sure. Uh, hopefully you can, you can see and hear me okay there. Um, I don't have a lot uh, for tonight, but um, they did want me to, to request to everyone that um, New York City um, Parks Department is actively looking for lifeguards. So we're beginning the process of getting ready for uh, the summer season. And uh, we typically have a lifeguard shortage. So if, if you know anybody or if you or yourself are interested or if you uh, can swim at all, uh, have any skill levels in the water, we would love to have you uh, look into becoming a New York City lifeguard. Uh, they have some training and, and some qualifications. But um, if, if you're interested, please go to our parks website and uh, for New York City lifeguard. So just want to mention that. Um, and as far as for Riverside Park, uh, I don't have a lot of updates. So I just want to check in with you guys. I mean, we're moving into winter. So we're, we're getting prepared for snowstorms, uh, which we are uh, ready for them. We've uh, done our plow drive, what we call a dry run, meaning that we fitted all of our equipment out and tested it out. And uh, um, we're, I think we're as prepared as we can be. I'm sure there'll always be some surprises. And hopefully, we, you know, we don't maybe we don't get any snow this year, but who knows? Uh, but if we do, we'll be ready for it. Um, we don't have any events uh, planned in in, uh, in December or January, uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the um, our Riverside Conservancy, uh, who usually mentions about events, is not here tonight, so we can pass on to anybody else. But if anybody else has any questions for me at Riverside Park, I'd be happy to try to address them. Um, I don't see any questions in the the um, present here today. Is there anyone online that has any questions? Okay, great. Um, All right, great. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Wesley, for that. All right, it's Stephanie. Um, I think Stephanie may have sent an email saying that, okay, she wouldn't be on. That's right. She's with the um, Conservancy. Um, and Karen Asner with Friends of St. Nicholas Park is um, a little bit under the weather, so she won't be reporting today. I didn't see Brett Taylor, so we're we're moving quickly through the agenda. Um, okay, um, are, does anyone have any questions, any additions? So we'll go ahead then with Matt. I think I saw you on Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, 
I'm here. Um, I'll add a, a little bit to uh, what Wesley had said about uh, lifeguards. Uh, before the end of our meeting, I'll uh, put the link in the chat. Uh, oh, for, great. Uh, and then I know that uh, our agency is going to be sending on uh, marketing material uh, to all the community boards in Manhattan uh, to promote uh, lifeguarding. Um, not only so, uh, you know, Wesley had mentioned we're looking for lifeguards, but um, they're doing qualifying testing right now uh, from now till uh, at least the end of January, uh, where lifeguards have to sign up uh, to take a, a test, uh, a swim test and a vision test and some other qualifying skills. If they pass those baseline skills, then uh, our agency will train people in CPR and first aid and additional life uh, lifeguard skills. Uh, so they have an opportunity to, um, uh, to get a job as a lifeguard this summer. Um, and uh, with, um, with that, uh, as long as they uh, complete the program and, and pass the training, uh, they will get paid for that, that time if they complete the course. Uh, which is uh, over 16 weeks and, and 40 hours. Um, uh, so speaking of lifeguards, uh, the pool deck at Sheltering Arms is coming along. Uh, so that's expected to be done uh, before uh, the pool season starts. So the pool here, uh, one of our pools here in uh, CB9 uh, will have a brand new pool deck. So we're looking forward to to that. Uh, it's greatly needed. And great. also the they're taking the opportunity with doing, um, uh, since they're tearing up the pool deck, they're also um, doing some up upgrades to the, the filter plant system uh, to the pool as well. So the little kids, what we call a waiting pool, uh, will have its own separate uh, filter plant system uh, to control the, the water quality um, for, for that. So that's great. Uh, the Morningside Park 113th staircase uh, should be kicking off uh, sometime late winter, early spring. That's where uh, we're going to be getting our the handrail uh, and the landings uh, improved uh, along that main staircase in, in Morningside Park. Um, and then construction is still underway on the pathways in St. Nicholas Park on the lower path and the upper path north of the 135th Street. Uh, and all that work is on a schedule and expected to be completed uh, before the end of this winter. So we're looking, to, we're looking forward to getting uh, the park back in whole uh, here uh, shortly. And um, I believe, oh, since Brad isn't here, uh, I'll give a shout out for the friends group, friends of Morningside. They're going to be hosting a tree lighting Morningside Park uh, this Saturday uh, at 5 p.m. at 120th Street and Morningside Ave, um, uh, uh, right in the park there, uh, which is the uh, largest, from what I've told, is the largest uh, Christmas tree, live tree, uh, lit up in a New York City park, uh, which Community Board 9 actually has quite a few uh, very large live trees. The tree uh, at 135th and St. Nicholas uh, Plaza, which Friends of St. Nicholas lit up last week is considerable and as well as uh, Montefiore Square. Uh, so props to, to CB9 for some, some large holiday uh, uh, tree displays. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I get one update actually I will give, even though it's on old business. Um, we, uh, there was a meet, last meeting, there was um, uh, on the agenda was about Playground 125 and when that was going to be open, uh, that playground has this new uh, multi-purpose area has since opened, um, I believe the, the week of Thanksgiving, uh, the kids are out there in full effect. Uh, using it and taking advantage of uh, the new field and, and multi-purpose uh, area. So that's great to, to have that back uh, and open. That's, uh, so great. Uh, that's Those are all the updates that I have. Does anybody else have any uh, questions for me? I have a question. When does the training for the lifeguard start program? I, I don't know when the actual training starts. Um, there might be more uh, information as people register. They have to pass uh, the uh, qualifying uh, skills first. So they have to be able to swim 50 yards in 45 seconds. 
uh, they have to have a, a vision check and be able to have a, a suitable eyesight without contacts or corrective lenses, um, as well as some other skills that they test off on before they can even qualify for uh, the training. Is there a deadline to sign up? Uh, I know uh, when I, I looked online prior to this meeting, and I know they have the qualifying training at different different recreation centers through uh, the end of January uh, so far. I don't know if it'll go past uh, January, but uh, um, so they have a, a good month and a half to sign up for a, uh, a class or, a, or, or a, not a class, but a, a, a qualifying test. Excellent. And I'll, I will, Matt. like I said, I will add that link uh, to the chat. And then the um, uh, I know uh, Parks will be sending out more information uh, so you guys can all help recruit. Yes. <laughs> Matt, thank you for your report. It was a lot of happy good news yes. in there, <laughs> especially the Craig Lounge on one at 125. I don't know if you'll have a chance to hang around, but um, Kelvin is up next. If there's no one else uh, at the top of the agenda, and he has an issue that's related to his program, if you're not already familiar, he's going to do a presentation. Do you have any questions for him, Kelvin? Okay. Uh, are Are there any more announcements or updates from anyone else on the call who may not have been on the agenda and and I'll start sharing the screen for Kelvin to come up then for his presentation. You know, okay. I, uh, I'm i new to this whole group and I'm a member of Sugar Hill uh, Garden on Edgecombe Avenue. Uh, and I really, this is my first time participating. I don't even know why I was invited. I do have some questions and all, but uh, I don't want to interrupt what you're plan was but if we can talk at the end of this presentation can, I would can you just introduce is, is your name can you just tell us your name again my name, is, my name is Irina okay Irina okay and you signed into the chat and and the organization that you're representing well I'm a well I am I am a volunteer at and a member of the Sugar Hill Garden Okay, I'm wonderful. Sure. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank but you. But if you have an announcement, you can you can do that now while we're um keying up. If you no, have no. an announcement or anything. Yeah, I don't have an announcement because I don't know. This is my like like I said, this is my first time here. I don't even I'll, know. I'll jump in. Was. I'll jump in and make the announcement. We have right. um a book giveaway and um Christmas event at our uh, at the garden. I'm also a member. My name is Sonia Simmons on uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, and I have sent the flyer in so that you can share the screen. Um, you said a book, a giveaway of what type? Uh, children's books. Children's books. Okay. Yes. Sorry. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and I don't see your name. What's your name? I don't see your name on the screen. It just says Jackie Robinson Conservancy. What's your, what's your name? Oh, my name is, uh, my name is Sonia Simmons, 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 and I, oh, Sandra. yeah, oh, and I, I did, I did put it into the chat. In the really? chat, okay, I'm not, I'm not watching the chat, sorry. Okay, thank you so much for that announcement, and that said, Jackie Robinson. Yeah. Irina, you said this is your no, first time. No, it's at the, it's at the Sugar, it's at the Sugar Hill Garden. It's going to be at the Sugar Hill Garden. I don't know why my, away. Right. So, so yeah, my my question was, my my. Okay. So what happens my, is this is your first time coming, and what we're doing at this time, we're following the agenda. The parks, the uh, Green Thumbs is on under old business, but it's an opportunity to come to see what's going on in all of our parks. If you're affiliated with Sugar Hill. You'll have an opportunity, as Ms. Simmons did, to share anything that's going on in that particular park. But this um, particular committee just shares all of that information. And if there is a concern or a question that you have, 
when we get down to Green Thumbs that handles the community garden, you'll be able to share or ask questions. Does that help you at Thank all? Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just looking to see how I can help my own community. Uh, oh, thank you. That, that's basically, you know, like I said, my first time in a meeting, I'm new to this whole thing. I love my neighborhood. I want to improve it. And I, I love the garden. So I wanted to see how my meeting with all of you, you know, would, would enhance me. You know, when, when you're the first person, you know, to ever like enter a meeting, you really don't really know what's going on. So uh, what I would appreciate is any kind of input or help that I can get so I can help my community and my garden. Oh, we appreciate that so much. And we're looking forward to you continuing to join us in these meetings and for your participation. Thank you so much for coming. So I'm going to, um, um, let's see. We're, we're gonna go ahead then and start the presentation. Yeah. We have um, Kelvin McAllister, Senior President, Uptown Inner City League Incorporated. It doesn't matter. You just want the mic and to hear you and the camera to see you. Oh, okay. And, and do you want to, um, I wonder if you can hear you know, me. As, as I go to it, we can flip the pages. You want me to flip the pages? Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, and let me. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Kevin. And, and, and it's so nice to see you. You used to come to our meetings all the time. Um, and, and the, right. So it's so welcome. Um, and you can go ahead and introduce yourself and I'll and I'll um try to go through the, the slides. Okay. I'll be, I'll be your page turner. Okay. First thing I'd I'd like to say, uh that I feel that I've been in partnership with Community Board 9 for many, many years. And whenever there's a concern that I may have, I know this is the avenue that I must take so that we can find some resolution and some correction. So I just wanna thank the Community Board 9 and all those who are in attendance on Zoom for taking time out and uh, putting my work, my important work, my organization's important work on the agenda so that I can shed some light on the situation that I feel that is going on, and hopefully we can continue to move forward for many years to come. Okay, so uh, Uptown Inner City League is a nonprofit organization, 501c3, uh, and we've added other uh, venues aside from sports. We have an education part of our program. We have a health and wellness part of our program. Um, we have a learning center, part of our program. We give away free books, we give away toys, uh, we give away turkeys and chickens and, and pineal at seasonal time. So, DB9 Landmarks, Preservation and Parks. Uh, as you see on this first page, you can see an old picture of the Annunciation Playground and the leaves of New York City Parks and Parks and Recreation. I thought that was important to me because I always felt that for these many, many years that I've been doing my work in the community, that I was a bona fide uh, member of in partnership with the Parks Department. And I was proud of uh, saying that I'm a partner with the Parks in providing services for the community, the families, the school, and so forth. So I'm going to go to the next page. Mm -hmm. So here, I officially went on the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation and on their on their park map at the playground. And you can see it demonstrates in the green areas where that is the boundaries and the jurisdiction of the parks. And then if you and that's going up north. And if you go to the south part, that now is a part of the Department of Education, and that's where they have their, their jurisdiction. And then there's a few pieces, pictures here on my right hand side that's showing of uh, the uh, monkey gym and how the park looked at one time where that fence, which belongs to the parks department, was, was dilapidated. Uh, a lot of bad things were going on in that area until 
of Count Dennis who came on board. Next. Why is, do I feel here with TV9? Again, it shows the importance why I keep bringing up these boundaries and these, and these property lines and these jurisdictions. Over here to our right at the top hand corner, there's, there's no park in New York City other than the Annunciation Playground where you can go and you can find an outdoor batting cage. And that was all done by the work of Uptown and the City League. We provided this for the community. We didn't ask parks for any funding for it. And this, and this batting cage has been a tremendous asset because it serves not only our program, but it also serves the community at home. Everyone is welcome to use this batting cage. Now, if you look over here to your left, where the Parks Department has the leaf and their sign, at one point, uh, the Annunciation Playground was there because the boundary is on the south part of the Department of Education. Someone by the New York City Board of Education representative, they removed it. They removed it because from the south down, that's the Department of Education, and from the north up, that land and that property, that jurisdiction belongs to uh, Parks Department. Now, if you see here, I say for this section of the area is here, which is important where we have permission and you're gonna, I'm gonna go into it in a minute. Well, this is where all of our sporting equipment and all of the sheds and the containers where we hold all of our sporting equipment Prior to years ago, when we used to hold it in this area that had nothing, it was an open space, we created this as an, as an organization so that we would become more organized. And not only that, we put a porta potty because the park department hasn't for years provided any space for our parents, our kids, our children, our community to go nowhere in the park to use the restroom. So we said, you know what? We're going to provide something because we shouldn't have parents coming and watching their kids play, and they shouldn't be going across the street in the bodegas and using their restroom. That's not healthy, and that's not safe. Next page, please. Nice. Why is UICL here again, community board not? There's a disagreement. In the Association Playground Park, Uptown Inner City League, Inc., years ago received permission has installed security cameras, installed a sports equipment shed, and additional storage containers, and also added the porta potty. You can see that in the demonstration of the arrow. The other possibilities of people going and using restroom is a small house up in a small park, or over here in Manhattanville, or at the school. And at this moment, there is no restrooms in the small house. The school is closed at a certain hour, and Manhattanville just don't let outside people coming in. That was the main objective in making sure that we had a safe place for our kids and our students and our parents to be able to go somewhere and it's safe. And mind you, that this porta party is serviced on a regular basis. It was a healthy and a safe place to go for our kids. We're gonna talk a little bit about our history. The Annunciation Program Park, during a dark period of time, we had to report constant criminal activity and incidents to the authority. In the park, there were rampant drug use, alcoholics tossed their bottles everywhere. The individuals threw trash on the field, on the playing field. The benches and playground equipment was old, run down, and neglected. The gate and fences were rusty and broken. The gates weren't locked at night, which allowed undesirables into our park at Annunciation. Years ago, neighbors refrained from walking through the park because of danger. There was prostitution, drug dealing, stabbing, shootout, death, property damage during the daytime, I mind you. Next. A little bit more about our 33 illustrious years of history at Annunciation and in the community. Annunciation Playground Park, organizing is what Uptown and the City League focuses on. 
The Lonesy Ship Playground Park had to become our sports and recreational home in the mid-1980s through the 1990s. Because the community centers in my area were closing or were not present, I felt a need to find a way of keeping my son and their friends very close and have a safe haven for them to play together. And more parents and their children wanted the same safety and they started to join us in the park with their friends. As a play group, this protected our kids to play together. And as a result, Uptown Inner City League, UICL, as a nonprofit, was created in 1990, and, in 1990, and UICL grew in the West Harlem community using the Annunciation Playground and other parks in the area, including the Jacob A. Ship. It's not there, but I'm letting everyone know. The vandalism, theft, or criminality in that area of the park didn't end completely right away, but it did decrease. And I think I credit our program being in that location. A little more about our history. Fighting back. UICL started to do the following to fight back. Number one, reporting the problems to all authorities and institutions. The NYPD, City of New York Parks and Recreation, Board of Education, and to Community Board 9. Persistently requested that defensive gates, water fountains, benches, and grounds were regularly repaired and or cleaned by the New York City Parks and Recreation. Three, receive permission and support. UICL received permission and support to install security cameras in the park and added a sports equipment storage shed in a rodent infested empty space in the park. That's a space I showed you guys a little bit earlier. We'll get to that. Number four, for many years, UICL requested that an association playground park receive a renovation and to add large stadium lights for night games and safety for our children. Next. More about history. Contacts. NYPD, City of New York, Parks and Recreation, the Board of Education, and Community Board 9. William Castro, New York City Parks Commissioner, Pamela Price Hayes, the former principal of PS MS 161 School, Robert McLean, Parks and Recreational Manager of District 7 and 9, Joe Minter, he was once the Parks Department Chairperson at Parks and Preservation, Steve Simon, who is still currently the Chief of Staff at Parks, Troy Outlaw was a liaison to Inez Dickens' office, board in, in, in 9 at Manhattan. Brazil Ortiz Thompson, she was a former New York City County Committee member and former female district leader of 7 and 9. My good friend, Honorable Mayor David M. Dinkin, Chair of Linda Hamilton. He was our 106th mayor, City of New York, professor in the practice of public policy, police officer Jason Harper, and deputy inspector for Marita Varen, New York City Detective 26 Precinct Detective Squad, police officer Heriberto Castro, NYPD Community Affairs at the 30th Precinct, police officer Michael DeFalco, New York City Police Department, Barry Weinberg, good friend of Uptown Inner City League and the Community Board 9. He was the former chair of Manhattan Community Board 9 and a longtime good friend of my, me and my wife, Annette Robinson. She is now the Community Board 9 landmark with landmark and preservation. These are just a few people that I've made contact with and created a strong coalition. The problems at an station playground. To the left, 2017, our backstop, when we used to practice hitting the ball off the tee, the vandalism in the community, in the park, how they just shredded our net. Here in the center, again, I talked about the batting cage we created. They tore it down to shred, and we kept building, and we kept building, and now it's stronger than ever. And each, in 2018, you'll see our banner that we were so proud of 
people from wherever, ripping it, cutting it up. That's the vandalism that was going on at the Annunciation Playground. The problem, once again, recently, our batting cage, did you see that big gaping hole? We caught people on civilians ripping and cutting that hole and using that net as a swing. In the middle, you can see a little bit more clear. And also, because of the surveillance that we had, we also were protecting the Parks Department property. The same person who vandalized our net is the same person who called his name in the beautiful tree at Annunciation Playground. And I said earlier, everything that I do, I go by the record and I report it. If you know, when things happen here, I always make my report, I take it to the right authorities, and you can see the slip that Uptown Inner City League has reported it to our local police. That's my responsibility as a licensed permit holder. Report the incident so that we can really, we can find some resolution to resolve these problems. Additional problem here, that shed I told you guys about earlier. This is what our shed looked like before we got permission, before we created the house, and before we got these containers to protect our equipment. If you notice, this is where we used to keep our equipment. And when it rained and when it snowed, these were the results. And every time it rained and every time it snowed, we lost thousands and thousands of dollars because we have to get rid of it. Rid of it. I tried putting a top over it, but the weight wasn't good enough. I again these are these 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 areas over here. And not only the weather damage, look at this place. It's an open house over here. People used to climb over these fences, steal our equipment, steal our bats, steal our gloves. And we have to keep replenishing and replenishing and replenishing. Next. Now, our solution that we felt there was a need at the Annunciation Playground for our students. The porta potty rental was needed because children needed to use the restroom and the facilities inside the school were closed, including the gatehouse, including Aaron Davis Hall. I didn't add that to it, but I have a strong history. Parks Department has not provided a solution for an open operational restroom for the children and the community and for our UICL sports program. I asked for many years, can we use the small parts up on the hill? And all I got was a runaround. They're using it for a storage place. But there's so many other parks in our community that have a restroom a place where kids and parents can go and use the restroom. And to here to the left. So when I showed you that area where the snow and the rain, so this is what my organization is. We went out and we raised funding so that we can protect our equipment from the element and from death and from damage. We installed a metal sports equipment storage shed, security cameras, and a port of -potty. And since this storage shed in the metal container has been installed, there has been no damage, there has been no property theft, and it is very safe and it's protected. Our solution, again, at the park, our security cameras was disconnected with the direction of Jeremy Fogati, local school engineering custodian at PSMS 161 school. Jeremy didn't didn't a plan or a solution to remedy or prevent vandalism, theft, or criminality by him or anyone at the school. We realize that when new people do not know or understand the history of the community and the efforts that were made to improve the park, Jeremy did not talk to me as the leader and founder to the community leaders and the children program that use Annunciation Park on a regular basis. Annunciation Playground has come to be one of the safest parks in Central West Harlem since Uptown Inner City League has initiated themselves to be present on a regular basis every day of the week. And we do not want to reverse 
the positive actions made by the park. I met with the principal, Jeremiah, Desamara, Gazamara, <laughs> and Sarah, and she has our, we have a full support of where the storage containers are, where the batting cage is, and I will provide a letter uh, from her. Next. Again, our solution. We didn't we didn't turn away. We were brainstorming, and these are our solutions. What steps did UICL take before installing the security cameras? I think we took the proper and professional steps. We contacted and informed the then principal Pamela Price Hayes of the PSMS 161 school. William McNary, the custodian engineer of PSMS 161 school, and my good friend, William Castro of the New York City Park Commission, among others, asking for permission to add security protection for the children and playground and sports equipment. Also, I have emailed from the kind of supportive Steve Valen from the Department of Education, who is the former head officer of school safety and facilities about the camera installation in the park, and there were no problems. Please understand that technically, the cameras are not on school property, but mm -hmm. are officially on New York City Park and recreational property. However, electrical power was provided by PSMS 161 management, compliments of William McInerney. Our solution, first example, there was a major issue in the park in which the New York City Police was tracking down a culprit and UICL contacted police officer, I mentioned his name, Detective Michael DeFalco of New York City Police Department from the 26th Precinct, who was <laughs> investigating this crime and needed to download the video from our cameras to catch the alleged criminal. Second example, the security cameras in the park saw an incident that took place was during school recess. A student expensive jacket was taken from the park by another person. And a teacher named Alex Rosario also was a former student 25 years ago of Uptown Inner City as a participant at the school asked if he and others from the school could look at UICL surveillance cameras in place where the student's expensive jacket was taken. Mm. The person was identified and the jacket was returned back to the student and to the delight of the concerned parent. Next. I just, I'm not gonna read these, but I just want you to understand when I talked about meeting with the commissioner and, and sitting down and brainstorming, he gave me his blessing. He gave Uptown NC his blessing. Here goes a letter of permission. And in this letter, the most important part that I read in this letter is where he said, it is my understanding that the installation of the concrete pad and the shed is expected to take place this month. That's the, the support for the shed. Please coordinate the logistics of this work with regional park manager, Robert McLean, I did. He said, I look forward to continuing to work with you and the Uptown Inner City League and the future. That was important to me. Yes. I thought we had a partner. And here goes a letter, next. Here goes a letter, I'm sorry. Here goes a letter of support and permission from Community Board 9, where we used to put up all of these country flags because we wanted everybody in this community to feel welcome. And the Parks Department was giving us a hard time in putting them up. And unanimously, I think it was 39 to zero and, and nobody contested that they supported the idea of welcoming all walks of life. And that's the feeling that we wanted to display at a non-station playground. All are welcome, all are here, to play as one community. Oh. First letter. This letter, again, is from 
Mayor David Dinkins. Mayor David Dinkins served as our honorary captain for 15 years. He was the one who threw out the first baseball at every open season at Anate Juhema. The community was proud. It was excited when the mayor walked into their park. The second letter, once again, informing all of those important people in the community and, in, 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 at, the, uh, at the board that we need to come together, we need to work together, and I hope that we can continue to find resolution so that this great program at Annunciation Playground will continue. Breaking ground, next. I'm sorry. That's the next one. I'm just going to give it a little time to stay up okay, on the screen sorry. in case. Um, show this time. time for people to pause it in case they're watching it online okay. at a later time. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Uh, the Neighborhood Association, Jacob A. Ship Playground. The basketball court was a, was a great happy new year. As you see, Mark Levine, the gentleman to the left, second to the right, he's the association representative at the Jake Airship. And you see me and my good friend, Mr. Castro. We broke ground again, even at the Jacob A. Ship playground, where we have a, a, a resounding basketball program for the last 30 years. That area also was full of drug dealing, prostitution, wasn't clean. Finally, the Parks Department and Silverstein, I believe that's who he was. He was the old commissioner. We hear breaking ground and they were able to raise over $1.6 million. And now we have a clean and beautiful basketball court up there. We have a nice and clean and safe baseball field. And and in my work in the community, it has always, always been about always working to support and improve the park. That has always been my goal. This is amazing. This is next. We go back so many years. And in this picture, many of us may know and many may not. This is the great legendary Mookie Wilson. Mookie Wilson was came to our park and put on a clinic and those kids were so excited about Mookie Wilson coming up because not, sometimes you just don't have professional players coming into the inner city. Mookie Wilson came in, he made an impression, an uh, everlasting impression, not only on the kids, but on me. Among these kids here in this crowd, three of these kids are now professional baseball players and they came out of Uptown Inner City League. Uh, Jasmine Candelario, uh, his name is, uh, his, his cousin is Jose Rosario. And we have a gentleman by the name of, we call him Lucky, by the name Le Leandri, Leandri Castro. He plays professional baseball. And all of them came out of the Anastasia playground. So we made a big difference. And so I appreciate you guys giving me this time to go through what my concerns are. And I'm hoping that the Parks Department have a change of mind before telling me, you got you have to move your storage equipment. You have to sign a contract. You got to allow us keys so that we can go in and out of your shed. Where are we going to put those storage equipment? We don't got nowhere to put them. And the principal made it clear. She said, it's not in harm's way is on the property of the Department of Education. And the principal supported us. Ms. Price, she supported us to, to improve our program. So I hope that the Park Department understands this, that Uptown Inner City is here to stay because if we don't be here for these kids in this community, I can see this kid out there on the streets doing things unnecessarily. So this place has always been a safe haven, a place to grow, a place to build friendship, a place to become family, and to become a real neighborhood. 
And I think that uptown in the city has played an important role and part in saving the lives of thousands and thousands and thousands of kids. And we want to continue that relationship. And I have to feel that if we're being threatened to move our equipment, if not, then you gotta move it immediately. I think that kind of tone and that kind of behavior for an organization and a leader, that I, could, I am a leader, to speak to in that kind of manner, I think is demeaning and I think is disrespectful. And I hope the Parks Department has a change of mind and allow us to continue to do our work for the next 50 years. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. So, because I have a question, so I don't believe there's a question about the work that your organization does in the community. Um, as you said, you've been here for over 30 years and you put your time in, you put your own money in. That's not a question. When um, you came and you spoke to me about what is going on, um, you made me privy to the fact that there is a new policy in place. Is that correct? They they have they they said they have a, a new policy and who, play. who is that? I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's a gentleman who's a worker. His name is Orlando Tulak. He's a worker. A worker for who? For Parks Department. Okay. For the Parks Department. What is his name again? Uh, Orlando Tulak. Tulak. I mean, yeah, Tulak. Ken Conyers is the permit chief. If anyone should have provided me with this new policy, it should have been Ken Conyers. It okay, have. that didn't happen. So where we are now is that there is a new policy. This gentleman was the one that gave you the information. Have you had an opportunity to speak to the permit director? I haven't had a chance to speak to the permit director. Only thing that I wrote back and ask, can I get a 60 day extension? Because what they were trying to do is give me a 30 day extension, a 30 day time period to move all that equipment out of the park. And that was impossible for me to do. So I requested an extension and then that's when I said, I need to give myself some time. I need to speak to somebody. I need to bring this story to light and I'm looking for that support. Now, mind you, now, mind you, I said that was a policy, and I have documents. When when William Castro allowed Uptown Tennessee League to build uh, a sports equipment set house, they provided us with that same type of policy, and I countered it, right? I countered it. I want to know about this. I want to know how we will resolve that, and so forth and so on. And William Castro came back to me and said, hey, look, don't worry about that. That's right. my and you shared that with me. And what I also said, because your organization is a longstanding organization, administrations change all the time, right? And when they change, unfortunately, right, the rules change. And so when that happens, then a dialogue has to occur. What that dialogue looks like for me is, okay, there's a new policy. Is this something across the board? If Ken is the permit director, we speak to him to find out what that is. Yes, and I said to you at the time, if it's in an extension, then find out. But if he is at the, there's a food chain, and if he's at the top of the chain, then that's who needs to be spoken to to see in addition to your extension, if there could be an exception, right? That's what that looks like because what your ask is, is really can your equipment stay? So um, I, my question, I don't know if, and what exactly does the Board of Education have to do with this? What it has to do with it, I said it earlier in my discussion that I talked about the map and I asked the question. I said, can you provide me with the proof and the evidence that my storage equipment containers is on the property of the park? And in the website, it clearly talks about that 
The Parks Department property and jurisdiction is on the north side. And where the school is at, it's on the south part. And that is where our equipment is there. And the principal, right, you got to honor. You got to honor. When there's a conversation, and we've been in the community for so long, if you give us a letter, and, and we have a document saying we support your work you're doing, and the co commissioner supports the work we're doing, if you're coming up with a new policy, still is all, you still must honor what the agreement was. You just can't come into the 11th hour and break the rule, honor it, and move forward. But we need to honor what we've been doing for all these years. One second, Kelvin, if you could help us, if you can just go to the slide and show us what is DOE property from the parks yeah. property. Okay, very good. Very good question. Now, here, this is just step back this, a little bit. This is 134th. Just step back just a little bit. Okay, this okay. is the 134th Street entrance. And when you come up the entrance of the school and in this gray area right okay. here, that is all the property and on the Department of Education. Uh -huh. Here is the green. That is the property of the Parks Department. All of that in the green is the property of the Parks Department. Here is the little house that is on the green, up in the small park, which is on the property. I got I got some questions about that, of the Parks Department. But if you look back here to the south, all that land where the, the, the school was built on was built on the south part of that property. So the jurisdiction line should go back here because none of our equipment, none of our batting cages, none of our storages is there. Now that one, that one gate, that one fence where we put the house, we got permission to put our house there. And that is the only property that actually belongs to the parks department. Is is it visible any of those pictures are any of those pictures? This is Matt Gittarch. I'm on the phone uh, here. Uh, and I believe Calvin is on, uh, or on Ke uh, Ken, he chimed in. He's actually uh, on the call here too. Um, I, I think that you're a little uh, mistaken as far as the property line goes because all of the playground area, uh, including the basketball courts and the along that fence line is parks department property it's not under the doe just like you had mentioned in your presentation earlier you said that the somebody from the school took down cameras that were on parks property you know that fence line is that same fence line of park that is parks property and parked owned right and and we got permission to put those cameras up because the meeting that we had with the commissioner. We I'm, I'm just letting you letting you know, I mean, maybe we need to meet on, uh, meet on, maybe it's easier to meet on site, but the area where, you know, you have your uh, storage container, that is parks property. That air, the area where those job boxes are and the port of sands, that is parks property. Um, the, you know, the school property starts, uh, at their walkway where it goes in, where it jets into their school, but where that's the staircase is and all of, all of that area by the basketball court, that is all, uh, New York city parks department property. Okay. I, I have a question then. For hey, you. semantics, give this guy a break, help him. Uh, Thank you. So, Thank you. so Ken, Ken Conyers is is on the call here. Maybe he can he can speak a, a little more. Uh, um, yeah, just one. So, yeah, one second, Matt, because so, we want to hear from him. But I just want to so that everyone gets a visual. Is there another picture on here that you want to point to that might give everyone more of a visual of where the where we seem to have a little bit of um, disconnect in terms of. Oh, the location. Oh, and you can have a seat. Yeah, I just pulled up the zoning map. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can tell me what page to go to. Email. I do it all the time. You can see. It's yeah, so that people can see because I don't want us to get um. 
you know, because this seems to be a discrepancy. But but the big picture is we want to find out what can be done. The big picture is help people, help yeah. people. No fucking arrows. This okay, guy's wait a minute. We we no don't people. tolerate that type of language. Please. We have to be respectful. Arrows and diagrams. That's, that's, and that's uh, the gate line where yeah. there was a that was a, the school. This is this is the school, and that's that's on the so south the side, the side the block, of the, the school was built on the south part of. And that's the other thing that I wanted to uh, on on uh, on on, 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 at, on the park. Now, my my question I want to say clear. Okay, so this this here is the school right, right. here. Back here. Okay. Back here is the school. Yeah, see the point and behind this right. gate too is the school. But this this equipment, the old storage place before you built the storage facility, this is is on the park's property. Is this is what we're supposed to understand? That is on the park, and that park is park. where I had meeting with William Castro, and, and I said, let's place. create a shed, and he said that was a brilliant yeah, idea, sure. and so we and he approved of it, okay. and and we built a, a house there and because our program's been growing. Okay. Now we've added. Basketball, football, baseball, women's baseball, uh, big basketball. So that house, that house is not enough room anymore. So we created for more equipment for the equipment to, to store more equipment. Okay, so let's so let's go back and let's hear what what Matt. Go ahead, Matt, and what the Parks Department. Can I just say one thing real one, quick? One more thing, and then one thing real quick. And I said it earlier. Parks Department put their signs up on the south side of the fence of the school. And it said, Annunciation Playground. My question is, why was the Annunciation Park name removed? That's going back towards the basketball court. That is why I had a concern, because if it's, if it's not part of it, then they, the school or, or your department shouldn't have never took the name off. Somehow, there was a discrepancy right there in the circle. It used to have a Nazi playground on both of them, and that's on the south side of the school. Mm -hmm. Why was that sign removed? Can you answer that question, Matt, before it so you that go was on somebody here? that was somebody in the neighbor we've had I've actually replaced the signs a couple times. It's somebody in the neighborhood that's continuing to vandalize uh the the sign. I disagree it's, with that. You know, had you know spoke I with, uh, with that somebody from. You see that paint? You see that paint, Matt? That is Park Department green traditional paint. And look how neat it is. If somebody was vandalizing a, a sign or a name, it would be all out of place. Look how neat that sign is, Matt. Come on. Don't kid me like that. You and I have a great I'm relationship. So, Kelvin, somebody I'm somebody so removed it because somebody complained. Because it wasn't on the park's property. Oh, oh, come on, man. So the sign oh, uh, I've had those signs replaced was, a couple times. Okay. Well, well, Could well, you all of us speak? cannot talk at the same time. So please so, let's respect each other and listen and give each one of us an opportunity to speak please thank you i have had those signs replaced a couple times now and as i don't know who it is but somebody continues to cover up annunciation playground it is not a parks department employee uh because it's why would we put our own sign up and then cover it up you never replaced it back though Okay, it, what we're going to do, because we have a bigger issue, yeah, that yeah. sign is an issue, that's low-hanging fruit, okay? You're here because you have equipment, and there's a new policy in place, and Matt, I, I don't know if, is there something that you can add to what that policy is? Is it something that is across the board that is affecting all playgrounds? 
Can you add some insight into this, please? So I was trying to get Ken Conyers, who's on our call, a chance to speak. So if we could let him, who's taken time out uh, of his evening as well, just like everybody else, to give him, him an opportunity to speak about uh, the policies that uh, uh, New York City Recreation and our permits All office right. As in place. Mr. Okay. Conyers, what is your name? What is your title? Hi, you speaking to Ken? Yes, Mr. Ken Connors. What sure, I'm, I'm, I'm the chief of Manhattan Recreation, and I also oversee citywide athletic permitting. That's not just Manhattan, that's all five boroughs. Hi, Mr. Conyers, welcome Hello. to our committee, committee meeting. Can you just see us? some insights to um, what exactly is happening happening with the policy and um, it's right now adversely affect, affecting one of our longstanding programs in the community. Sure. So first of all, uh, nice to, I guess, virtually meet everybody. Um, Matt had asked me to join tonight uh, based on a presentation that was being given. Um, so first I want to say, that New York City Parks permits uh, over a million, a million hours a year on our fields, about 8,000 organizations across uh, 8,000 sports fields and courts, right? Um, so this the situation that's happening at Annunciation, we get requests and, and uh, agreements across the entire city. So part of my job is not only to ensure that our fields are permitted equitably, fairly, and ensure that our sports organizations, such as um, Kelvin's, is able to run the programs that they have. That's part of New York City Parks' is, is mission and responsibilities to ensure that we're providing uh, equitable and fair space for people to run their programs. So I just wanted to put it out there that when I heard, you know, certain individuals, I'm not sure who everybody was that was speaking. Um, I just wanted everybody to know that it's Parks' goal, and we have a, a whole division geared towards permitting and the equitable uh, permitting policies, right? So part of that uh, office, we have a citywide permits coordinator, which is the Orlando uh, Tulak that was mentioned on the call. Just so you know, he is responsible for citywide, not just Manhattan. He started in Manhattan um, and now he's in charge of citywide athletic permits. So- What is his name? Orlando Tulak. He, his name was mentioned earlier as well. Okay. So um, just to give that a little bit of framework about permitting itself. Now, this specific situation and, and more geared towards Annunciation Playground, one of the things that I have to ensure that I do on behalf of the city and on behalf of all the organization permit holders is that we apply an equitable and fair distribution of permits and policy, right? Um, I have to ensure that if one organization can do something that when requests come in, I can justify either agreeing to another organization or not agreeing to another organization to do same things. Lots of parameters, lots of requirements, lots of things go into those decisions. Um, we get requests like this all the time. Um, and we do our best as, a, as an agency to ensure that sports organizations have the, the resources and the space to do their programming. Right. We're not we, we can't be the only option, but we, we do the best we can to ensure that everybody has what they need field wise and court wise. Um, doesn't always work out. But in this situation, it's a unique situation because the um, Kelvin's organization has a large amount of the time at Annunciation. There are other groups that use it. Um, other groups will be permitted there. But uh, that organization has the bulk of the time at that at that organization at, at that field. Sorry. So let, let's get to the crux of the concerns and, and problems. Just wanted to give a little bit of a, a framework before I get into that. So a couple of concerns that we have here and a couple of thoughts that we have here. There is a new container agreement. I, I wouldn't say it's a new policy. You always needed to receive permission to put anything on parked property. Doesn't matter what it was, a soccer goal to a shed. It doesn't matter. You need permission to put it on parked property Parks is assuming liability on those things when they're on Parks property. When I say liability, if somebody falls into it, if somebody breaks into it, if somebody gets hurt, whatever it is, at the end of the day, uh, the Parks Department is going to be asked the questions, right? So we have to make sure 
any Thernal property is approved and allowed to be there. So I think I think it was correct that a storage shed, um, it's it's a different type of shed that we normally approve, but the storage shed that's on the location um, is not something that we're contesting at all. We are not saying that that shed needs to go, nor are we saying that that shed should not be there. Um, there's a clear and demonstrated need for sports equipment and other things for a program that uses a facility a majority of the time. So we're okay with that shed, just like uh, we're not going to rescind William Castro, although he's no longer the borough commissioner here. We don't just turn around and just start yanking things away from people. That's not what our goal is. That's not something that I will ever have done when it's part of my mission and goal uh, to broaden and heighten youth sports in the city. Right. So that shed is not an area of contention or concern. Everything that's around there needs to be placed in that shed. The security cameras are. We should not have security cameras inside of a park that other people have access to, that can see kids, that can see other park users, that can see other organizations, that um, can monitor a location. That's not something that is uh, safe for us, legal for us, and we do not think we would not allow any sports organization on any of our properties and any of our parks to put their own cameras in, right? So that is not something that was ever received permission from New York City Parks. I think there was a um, agreement with the school for some type of power. I think they since rescinded um, that, that power agreement. Um, and at this point, uh, we feel it's best not to have cameras at that location. As far as the porta potty, uh, this happens citywide. We don't have bathrooms in every single one of our uh, parks uh, where the city, the mayor's office and others are working extremely hard to figure out um, additional uh, public restroom options around the city and a lot of being worked on around that. Um, and, you know, coming up, there will be more. Uh, not every park can have it. So we understand we don't want kids out there especially in organizations playing from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. with no bathrooms, kids running across the street and all that. So how we handle this is one, permission needs to be received from the agency. You cannot just place a porta potty on uh, public property or parks property. If we allowed that everywhere, we would have party parties everywhere on every sports facility um, around the city. So that's something we just can't allow to happen. But with that being said, when there's, a request, we entertain it. We look at the parameters. Is there, is there a public restroom nearby? Who's using the field? How much time does that organization have the field? Um, and the like, because if somebody has a two hours a week and they're only there for Mondays from four to six, we're not gonna let them put a porta potty on the, on the property. But when somebody has as much time as um, Calvin's organization, it's something that we will entertain. However, there's a start date and an end date and there's policies around it. Can't stay there year round. Um, technically what would happen is we have the right to remove anything off our property that, that could be removed off our property. And the person that would get the fine would be the organ, would be the company that is renting it to the people, right? We don't like to go that route. We've had to go that route before. Um, but it's not something that we want to do. So there should be a start date and an end date for that portable uh, unit to be there. And that's something that is easily able to be worked out with the permit office and the PRM, which is Matt, for that location. But permission has to be received. It's gotta be in writing. You can have the um, portable unit from April 15th to September 15th. I'm just making up dates. Don't hold me to those dates, but I'm just giving an example. And then the porta potty gets removed. And next year we do that again, right? So that's how we handle any type of facilities that don't have restrooms for sports organizations. We don't approve a lot of them. We don't go around and approve them in every park. There's, they've created um, locations for homeless to sleep in. There's been um, illegal activities being done in porta potties around the city. They, they often get set on fire around the city. Um, so there's a lot of things that we have to take into consideration when it comes to these units. But in this situation, again, not um, a total concern other than permission was not authorized and received for it and there's no start and end date and there's no clear understanding of um, that 
Parks Department gave permission for that. So that's the porta potty. The, the where I think we're getting some things misunderstood when it comes to the storage units is there was additional units brought on site. From my understanding, there was three or four small, what they call job boxes, small job boxes that were put on the location and put up against the fence. Again, something that was not approved, something that there was no discussion with New York City Parks, something that was not authorized, and something that would have to follow <clears throat> a certain protocol. Not saying it won't be reviewed, not saying it won't be discussed, not saying it would not be considered, but to just pick up and put anything on New York City Parks property is something we cannot allow and will not allow because then it's going to happen on every sports facility and every sports court across the city. And again, when I started this conversation or this, this discussion, I really emphasize my job here is to be equitable and fair across 8,000 organizations, right? So the, the additional containers cannot be there. And those were the containers that were asked to be removed off the property. Uh -huh. Typically, uh, we give 30 days for anybody to remove things off parks property, uh, authorized or not authorized, right? Once we ask them to remove it. Uh, we, we, we followed that. That's standard across what we do. We followed that. Kelvin had sent a letter or, or an email and had asked for additional time. It, they came into my office. Hey, Ken, this is the request. I said, great. Okay, go ahead and give that additional time. Um, so that's where we were then. So I just want to make it very clear to everybody that's listening. Uh, if anybody knows me as a person, uh, I, I run recreation for the city of New York. I'm all about kids, families, sports, and all that. I, I run athletics for the city of New York. As far as permitting, um, you can ask organizations about me. I'm, I'm about a fair, consistent approach across the board. I completely value what the organization does. I respect the organization, but I have to ensure that rules and policies are being followed. And at the same time, they're equitable and fair across the board. If I have somebody else that gets permitted at that location that wants banners, porta potty, storage, I now put in the position of, wait a minute, why would I be treating one organization different and better over another organization? Right. So that's one of the things that I have to ensure that I can justify and explain the, the one reason that I have that justification to allow um, an organization such as uh, Kelvin's organization is really to. They have the majority of time at the location, right? They, they permit it and they program it a lot. Right. When you permit and program something a lot, there's additional needs there. Right, so that's why a storage container does make sense. A porta potty uh, during a start and end date does make sense, um, and that's something that we'll be happy to, as as an agency, uh, continue and and figure out. But we need to make it very clear to the board and and to Kelvin to others that permission must be received for anything. This is New York City Parks property. This belongs to the community and 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 to other user groups as well. Um, and we can't just have one organization come in and just do or just put or just and then and then come to us and say we're treating a certain way or, or we're not being fair or whatever. Conversations need to happen ahead of time. And if the the answer is no for whatever reason, I would like everybody to trust and believe that there's a lot of thought put behind these things. I hope I'm conveying to everybody at the moment the amount of thought, the amount of attention, the amount of detail that I put towards these requests across the entire city. So I I was listening. I was going to jump in earlier because I felt like <laughs> some of the stuff that was being said was not completely accurate and that um, it, it's not as large of a deal as I think it was being expressed to be. Um, these are not things that are not common in sports. These are not things that we want to hurt any organization, but everybody just needs to follow the rules, policies, get the appropriate permissions, and parks needs to ensure that we understand what's happening on the facility at all times and what's on the facility at all times. So I'll stop there. Um, I said a lot. Um, okay. I can answer any additional questions that you may have, um, and then I can you know, explain next steps if necessary. Mr. Project, thank you for sharing that information. For the sake of clarity, 
Let me, um, my, my question is, what I am hearing you say that you are aware that this particular organization covers the bulk of the time at that facility. And although there may have been an agreement, you were not privy to that agreement. Now you guys are coming in, there's a review. And what you're asking is whatever the containers are that are there, the porta potty, the shed, that a permit or a request now be put in in order for that stuff to stay there. But yes. there are two containers that you weren't aware of at all. And at this time, you're not interested in allowing those containers to remain. Would that be so accurate? Kind of. Mostly, I'll just clarify one or two things. One, um, we, I was aware of the previous agreement for the storage shed to be there. So, yes, we're not questioning that. And the storage shed is something that, as long as it's maintained, uh, every all the equipment's in it, nothing left around it. It's locked up. It's safe. We, you know, we're okay. What I would like to do is get that formal agreement on file. Um, with Kelvin and, and his organization. And that's just about paperwork. That's, um, there's certain liability things that need to be corrected there. There's some insurance that needs to be understood there. So as far as the storage container, I, I was aware of it um, and it was already authorized prior to, you know, and we don't typically, you know, if an old commissioner leaves, we don't just do away with their, um, agreements and or, or policies. So uh, that's okay. I, the But I do want to make it clear that other things were not at any time agreed to and or authorized by New York City Parks, including security cameras, some uh, banners and, and, uh, and items like that, and the porta potty. These are things that there was no agreement, no authorization for this to occur. This was done without authorization to parks, without communication. Or well, there might have been some communication in and around it, but there was no authorization for that. Again, okay, so right happy... now, written authorization is needed for the porta potty. The security cameras are there is no exception to be made for that. So that will not be allowed. Um, and so what you're saying is you just want the, the written permit from this organization for the for the containers that are presently on the site. Is that correct? The, the one, the one container. The security cameras is a separate issue. Yeah. The, the <laughs> one container that's on the, the, the one storage shed, I should say, little house, the metal shed, that yeah. one, I, I would like the agreement to be completed like everybody else around the city uh, is doing. And we're in the process of cleaning that up citywide. So this is just one of them that uh, we would like to get under file. The other ones, I, again, I'm open for a conversation. Kelvin at any time can request to speak to me, just like the other you know, thousands of organizations that at some point throughout the course of their permit ask to speak to us. Happy to discuss these things. I will make it clear to this board and to others, some things will be a yes and some things will be a no, but there's justification and reasons for the no. Um, but I, my team, Matt, and New York City Parks will do everything within the rules, policies, um, and everything that we can do to ensure that organizations um, have the resources they need, but in a fair, equitable way across all of our sports organizations. So happy to discuss it with Kelvin, happy to talk about what's possible, happy to be very clear and transparent with what's, with what's not possible, right? Um, I deal with this citywide. This conversation happens hundreds of times a year. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll, We'll do everything we can. So you, you have it right. Um, and just allow us to have that conversation, uh, get everything on the table with, with what's there, give official positions of what can and cannot be done. And anything in the future should be a request to New York City Parks and uh, before it happens. If, if we can go that route, these conversations would be much easier. Okay, yeah, we, thank you. We have another question from the audience, Liz. Go ahead with your question. 
Um, Ken, just for clarity, um, the small building on the corner of 135th and Amsterdam, is that also owned by Parks? What is uh, what is that little building used for? Yes, it's, you know, it is uh, this, this on the uh, the north, the north uh, west corner, correct? Yeah. So, yes, that oh, is a, yeah, a building yeah, yeah. that's. That is a building that's owned by uh, New York City Parks. Uh, the district does have some equipment uh, and maintenance uh, material stored in there. Um, I know that our agency, and it'd be great if this uh, board could uh, make sure that that building is on um, uh, the district needs uh, list if it's not already yeah. to make sure that, you know, we can uh, get uh, ADA and public restrooms uh, built uh, within that playground. So, cause it would be a great, uh, you know, service to the community to be able to eventually have working accessible uh, playground or uh, bathrooms uh, from that building. Right now, that's not something that the building's in condition to be able to, to uh, provide. Mm. Yeah, and I attended that public school. So a hundred years ago, there were bathrooms that had children. And, 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 and so. if, I, if, I may, if I may just jump in on this, but Ken, if you're still there, and Matt, how many times, Matt, I discussed with you the possibilities of utilizing that small house up there. And the conversation that took place was this. Parks Department was fixing up their building somewhere on 123rd and 7th Avenue. And they were going to use that for a storage. And as soon as they renovate that area, the storage that they were using was going to go back. And I'm I asked you many a time, can we utilize that place to, to fix the bathrooms up? Can we utilize that place to put our equipment in there? And the answer was always the same. We're not going to use it right now because the piping is bad, the, the, the bathroom is not working, and the storage is still there. So if you can just sit here and say that I never had these conversations and wanting to utilize an ideal space for my sporting equipment, perhaps these containers, these job boxes, would have never been necessary. And i got to say this, that... Commissioner Castle said he looks forward to working with me in the future. And I have written documents, written documents from the principal. I have written documents that Mr. Castle wanted to know a little bit more about the purpose of the security cameras. You said this, and I'm appalled by this, that we those cameras are there with the possibility of people spying on kids because they're in the park and so forth. And we don't know who has has authority and access to these cameras. That cameras is under the representation of Uptown Inner City League. And okay. the whole so, one moment. One moment, right? Because we're gonna we're gonna pull this in. I understand that this is your baby and mm -hmm. it is very dear to you. Right, and any changes, it feels as if it is an attack on your commitment. This is not, this is not why we are here. Okay, understand that it is not attack. Everyone appreciates and knows what your organization does. Yes, okay, right, and so we are here because we want to make sure that you and your program have everything that you need. And these two are here, Matt, Ken, mm -hmm. their conversations that were made may have been right. had before. Mm -hmm. What didn't happen, it didn't happen. But, right? is a new but now there is a dialogue, okay? Yes. He's not saying you didn't ask them, yeah. okay? What he's saying is that that is something that could possibly can be considered now. We just Ken need a real here. agreement. Right? Okay. Ken is Thank here. You. There's an issue with the container. How do the resolution? Oh. We're going to do some written documentation. Let's have the dialogue. Let's be in the present now. We're going to bring it down a little and we're going to move forward so that you can possibly keep the equipment that you're there and whatever 
we'll navigate it. Okay. And and one other thing, just clarification: this small building that you all are speaking about, one um, thirty yes. fifth. It's 135th and what? Amsterdam. 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 Is it the West. northwest or the southwest corner? Northwest. 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 Okay. okay. And folks, so where we are now is 810. We're going to move this forward and get into so we, one. Just, no, let, 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 me, let her speak. Go ahead. One thing. When the shed was inaugurated, there were people there from Parks Department, Police Department, and everything. I was there and I brought up one thing specifically to the police officer. So what's your name? My name is Rosa Delgado. I live in the community. Okay. My daughter has been a part of the program for seven years. She's now volunteering her time coaching them. She's in school to actually become a coach because they've been such a big role models for her that she's doing the same thing that they taught her. You understand? So I mentioned to them, there's a lot of Older guys hanging out here, smoking, drinking, doing whatever. Where's the police presence? The only response I got from them was, oh, you let me know and we'll come in. Not once in the seven years, well, nine years, that correction, 10 years that I've been living right across the street from that park, have I seen police officers go in there to patrol. So there's no type of security whatsoever for these kids. The kids, community kids, pass across the street, they'll cross alone, and they're in there alone, fending for themselves. The security cameras, they're pretty much eliminated. The mess of kids hanging out in that back corner by the, bas the, the basketball court. It's pretty much helped with the thefts because they were stealing cell phones. The kids would drop their phones to go play. Phones were being stolen. Jackets were being stolen. All kinds of stuff being stolen. You understand me? That's eliminated that. So what's up with the security? If you guys don't want the cameras there, you guys have to step it up and do something about that. Well, that's a, that's something that can be a topic for discussion and dialogue. That's why you speak to the police, community affairs. That's the, the next available option. We can do all of that, and right? Because if, no, there are cameras there. Kelvin is not going to tap into the cameras, but in this age of technology, other people can, right? So that's why the park has to have that policy. So these are the things that you have a dialogue about, but we can't, you know, tighten up our fists right away and da 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 da, -da. It, it gets us nowhere. We're not going to do that. And and I just can't. If you could just answer quickly for the for the group. Are cameras in any of the parks? And what is the process for parks to install cameras and have control over um, the cameras within the within parks? So I can I can answer this. It's very limited. I don't I don't have it's definitely not my expertise. Um, but what I will say that um, you know, from my understanding, there are NYPD cameras in 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 and around some parks. I don't know if it's the exterior or interior. It's definitely not my expertise or, or my understanding, um, but no individual use groups would ever install them into a park, right? That would be something I, that would be I done. I understand that. Yes, I, yeah, I, 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 understand, I understand that. Let me just say this one thing. For whatever reason, that park is under the jurisdiction of the 26th precinct. We're in the jurisdiction of the 30th precinct. You don't see cops coming up there from the 26th precinct to go check that park, which is the jurisdiction. Do you understand? So something has to be done for security. My daughter's 19. I don't have to worry so much that if somebody tries something that she can't defend herself or say something about it. But there's little kids there. Yeah. The parents may be on one side of the park because it's pretty big. They could be in the field. The parents might be sitting up in the park with little ones. Something happens. Who's going to be able to say or do anything? Nobody about it. There's nobody. No, there's literally no security there. If we before, we, before, we, before we end this, then you said very clear that it's your, your part of your responsibility with other programs submitting their application and you want to try to make it as adequate for all these other folks and other people to come in. But you know that Uptown Inner City League has been consistent at, at the Annunciation Playground. So what are you suggesting that people come in and you want to make sure you find space? So now are you suggesting that you may have to tap in to the time that we put in there. We out there nine months out of 12. You know it. Nine months out of 12. Kel Kelvin. Yes, we have 
We have the bulk of that space. But Kelvin, you're, you're saying just hey. Kelvin, that's not something that you need to worry about. That's not something you need to worry about, Kelvin. Nobody said that. I'm talking about a citywide approach. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about specific to your organization. Again, you know, I think I, one of the board members had said, this is not a personal thing. This is not about a specific organization. I came on here to talk about permitting as a whole. I do that in multiple community boards, multiple elected officials, multiple boroughs. I, when I speak about something, I speak about it as a whole, which is what I did in the beginning. And then I broke it down to this specific park and the individual elements of this park. Right. So that's not something that you need to worry about. No. Again, if you're using the space, it is needed. It is a demonstrated uh, programming going on. That's what we want in the city of New York. Right. So, again, your organization is, is highly respected by us, is appreciated by us, is appreciated by the community. We just want to ensure that just like other organizations and groups in and around Manhattan and in the other boroughs, that the same authorizations are given, permissions given, rules are followed, and policies are, are adhered to. That's all we're asking for. Okay, so what, what, I'm, what I'm hearing, and I'm going to walk away and take it this way, that because when, when I, I was seeking dialogue, right, and I'm providing information, and I was asking the questions, the team really are hardly ever got back to me. So when the dialogue shuts down and I ask questions, I send it to you and nobody calls me back, but you say you respect the organization. You respect the work that we're doing. You respect the time that we put in. Then why isn't the team getting back to the leader of this organization. That's all I want to understand. And then, then you kind of understand how I feel when it's like, it's like I'm being dismissed when all I do is want to ask questions and get answers. And I'm asking legitimate questions, but nobody called me back. I, I asked a question and no one has got back to me in the last seven weeks. Do you think that's really fair? to leadership? Do you really think that's fair? Do you think that's really professional to treat an organization that has been a pillar in the community? I don't think that's fair, Ken. I, and I, pre I appreciate that. And I mean, I'll leave it here that, and I'm not going to make excuses, but when you have two people dealing with a couple of thousand organizations, it does take some time. What I would open the floor, what I would open it to is if you don't hear somebody get back to you or and I'm not talking about a day and I'm not talking about a week, right? If, if, you, if ample time goes by and it's something that you feel like you're not being heard, you have my email as well. You can reach out to me as well or give me a call. Um, that's what I'm there for. My teams are there to provide day-to-day -day, and I'm there to troubleshoot and to provide support when and if I can. So if, I, I, you know, I, I'm there as well. I mean, we all have busy schedules, but I will always take the time out to speak to someone who's running an organization like yours. Okay, so, so what I'm taking from this, I'm oh feeling because of the dialogue that we're having right now, and I think it was important that you understand my stance and my position and my commitment to the community, that there's, there's always a possibility of finding real resolution. Is that what I'm hearing? Kevin, I don't want to do this on a community board when they have other topics to discuss. You can I give me a call and we'll discuss it. But we, yeah, yeah, we're going to continue the dialogue. The conversation has been that, Kelvin. Yes. It's dialogue. It's dialogue. It's dialogue. You're That's being heard. We're, we're, you're, you're being and what heard. he just we're said respected. to you is that he respects your organization. He's here to do a job that's for all of the city. Now that this is on the table, he will address it. Yeah. Give that yeah. here's the you know, opportunity to happen. I'm, 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 I'm open. I'm open. He appreciates all, right. all that you have Good. done Good. for the park and the community. Oh, and we all do. Thank, thank you. Charge the community. I'm open. I, I live here on my life, sweetie. I yeah. know who told it is. I know the work that you do. I know exactly what this is. And we're going to move the agenda for um, and, and thank you, Matt. You gave us an update on Playground 125. So, um, Alex, if you're here, if you can give us an update or any, um, if, if there are any community gardeners.
who have any updates for the Green Thumb Community Gardening Program. I think everyone here. I think everyone here taking time out there. Well, they thank, thank you, you for being here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, good evening. Uh, I'll be brief because we don't have major updates because the gardens are uh, resting for the season. The season officially closed uh, October 31st uh, with the garden, many of them uh, closing for the season. Um, but I did uh, upload the flyer for Sugar Hill uh, to Google Drive real quickly. Um, I'm happy to pop that in the chat. I'm excited for this event, which is their second event for the season. I think Sonia's still on. Sounds like hot cocoa cider, a free book of giveaway, and it sounds like Santa is also available at Sugar Hill Community Garden. Uh, we look to have uh, two or more events done each year by our community gardens. Um, and I love the wintertime events because they're not what people are normally expecting for a community garden uh, and looking at gardens traditionally being closed. So I love that Sugar Hill here is following the model of uh, Mr. Patriots, Dorothy McGowan up north, which has been having Santa come up to Washington Heights for a number of years, complete with a whole bunch of Christmas lights, et cetera. Uh, so hopefully that link there works in the, in the chat. But uh, it, that is uh, this Saturday on the 9th. From 3 to 6 p.m. And then I'll just toss in a link to the Green Thumb website as well, where we try to have as much as possible in terms of upcoming webinars and events, um, even though things are slowing down a little bit for us this time of year as well. Although we do still have um, some wreath making activities coming up, uh, both Bronx and Manhattan, the work day up in Bronx, and a crop planning virtual uh, webinar on January 9th. If you just uh, follow that link that I sent, uh, it will take you to the, uh, that. And all Green Thumb events programming of that nature are free and open to the public, regardless of whether someone is a member of a community garden or not. And I was happy to see that we had some folks from some other community gardens on. It looked like folks from uh, Edgecombe, who's still here, Sugar Hill, as well as Gatehouse Garden. So I counted at least three. Maybe I missed somebody else. So thank you again to the board for inviting us and trying to make it attempt to reach out and involve more community gardens. Again, make sure everyone has, has signed in and please um, note the community garden that you represent and provide your email address if we have not already received it. If you're not receiving our emails, then please make sure we have your email address. Thank you so much, Alex. Oh, we're so happy to see you back here this month. We appreciate it. Um, does anyone have any questions for um, Green Thumb? Okay. Um, let's see. Liz, do you have any updates for um, the 142nd Street development? Any latest? Has the, is the demolition complete? I haven't walked over there. You haven't seen, seen it. And it was about half to two thirds down. Okay. Um, and I, well, yeah, I mean, in, ter in terms of the historic district, there's nothing, not, nothing going on. Well, that's not true. Landmarks is uh, reviewing the current historic district of, you know, that block would, it would be included. Yeah. Um, but it, it's too late for that block now. <sighs> oh, dear. I don't know if you went this year with any updates on the district. Yeah, I don't. I don't see you in on the call. I didn't see you. In. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much, Liz. Yeah, we're all very upset, and disappointed and about that. I did ask at the full board meeting last month. Last month, yeah. Um, uh, Sean Brave's office was going to reach out to the developer um, about their plans for the buildings that they're tearing down. Um, because as of right now, we have no idea what their plans are to build. Okay. Um, does anyone see anything else that we've, um, um, let's see. Yeah, we don't have morning sites heights or the um or morning yeah, no, sites. 
Okay. Donnelly. Heather. I think we have a Yeah, we can't hear you. We don't have a quorum. The train is going by right now. So I'm going to um then what we'll what we'll do then is um it seems like we've gone through the agenda. Unless anyone else has any other questions, then does anyone want to make an, a motion to end the meeting at 825? I'll move. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Who motion and who second? April Adams seconded. April Adams second. So Liz, Liz made the motion. Liz <laughs> made the motion. Thank you. Okay, so it's um eight twenty five. So our meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Let me just see the chat. Thank you, everyone, for coming. See you in the new year. Oh, Have a blessed day. Yeah, Happy New Year. Year. Yes, Happy New Year. Yes, see you all in the new year. Our next year. meeting is yeah, January 3rd. So please, um, and we'll try to make sure that we stay on top of in terms of um, getting the communication out to everyone. Looking forward to the Edge Come Tree Lighting, Matt. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> What was the largest lighted tree? Um, I thought the largest lighted tree in a park, in a park, I guess. Yeah. But do you have one at Edgecock? Well, um, I always, well, before, um, I guess, as Reverend a, Thomas used to, mm. Reverend Thomas and, some, uh, and a neighbor used to light it. Um, at the tree on Edgecock. And one... So, um, Heather, Heather, are you there? Oh, I think this is Pat, Patricia Caldwell. Heather? There. Uh -huh. uh, the Heather. power was cut. Yeah. The, um, so they just wanted to write a resolution. Okay, let me try to let me just try to end the meeting on um, stop recording. So let me see how do I stop? Stop recording, recording and get back to me with the notes and the recording. Okay. Yes, I will do that. Let me. Thank you so much. Let me. Thank you all. Thank you so much, and we'll we'll work together to get the minutes complete. Okay. Thank um, you, Heather. Thank you. I appreciate. Let me stop okay. recording. Okay. <laughs> Good night, everyone.